Hi everyone, Andrew Carruthers here for Sam Villa in Sugar House, Utah at Lunatic Fringe. So what I wanted to focus on today is actually some blow drying techniques for very short hair. Katie's got a great texture to work with because she actually has a pretty challenging texture. It's got a little bit of a wave to it, it tends to be pretty fuzzy. She's got some pretty strong growth patterns in there. So if we can get her smoothed out, this is gonna be a great technique for you. So I prepped the hair first with two products. I used the Redken Satin Wear to add some softness, add some shine. And I also used the All Soft, which is their Ar Argan Oil product, which is really incredible for reducing that frizziness in her hair, lots and lots of moisture. So those are great to prep with. You always wanna start with, your, with the hair very, very wet. The thing is, is if you let this dry at all, the natural growth patterns and the natural texture are really gonna take over and you're gonna to have to fight with them. So I want you guys to start with it very, very wet. So if you've done a full haircut and it's starting to dry out, if it's this type of texture, you may have to go back in and re-dampen it down, especially along the front hairline. If her growth patterns have started to take over, you're sunk. So what I'm gonna to use to start with is actually one of my favorite blow drying tools. And believe it or not, it's not one of our brushes, it's one of our combs. It's the short cutting comb. The reason I really dig this for blow drying is I can start with the wide side and really get some good direction on the hair. And then I'll switch to the fine side, which will give me a lot more tension to be able to press out any growth patterns. I'm gonna start in the front. And what's really, really important is to use the back of the comb, this kind of bridge of the comb, to press behind the teeth. That pressing is gonna increase the tension, and we know that heat and tension is really what creates a great blow dry, right? So we're gonna start here in the front. We're gonna work back and forth using the wide teeth and really pressing out with the backbone of the comb. I'm using actually more of a medium heat right now because it's on her face, more for her comfort than anything else. Nice thing about our, our blow dryer, the Sambia dryer, is even on high, it doesn't have that ridiculous heat to it where you're gonna burn people and scald their scalps, which is one of my favorite things about the blow dryer. It's just got a great heat to it. So again, working it back and forth, really pressing out with the backbone of the comb. And now that I'm starting to get maybe about 50, 60% dry, I'm going to switch. I'm gonna to come to my fine teeth. Again, the reason I'm gonna to switch to the fine teeth is to even increase the tension. I've got the directional part of the blow dry started. Now I'm gonna really look at trying to smooth out that wave pattern that she has. And I'm just gonna keep working it back and forth the whole time. Now let's say she wants to have more of a swept fringe in a certain direction. All I would do is, as I start to see the hair form, and can you see how the hair is actually starting to pop into a place right now? This is the perfect time to start directionally blow drying again into the place that you want the hair to fall. So this is where I would start to work it right into that swept motion. I'm actually kind of prepping her for a fringe technique, so I'm gonna keep working it back and forth because I do want it to fall more straight down. So working it back and forth. Fine teeth. And utilizing the bridge of the comb to really increase the tension there. So you can see I'm getting a nice polish without even putting a brush in her hair. And poor Katie's hair has been through a few levels of lightener, so to get this nice of a polish is quite the feat. She's got some angry ends. All right, so now I'm starting to get a nice shape. The second thing I'm gonna do as far as the blow dry, is I'm gonna put my comb down, and now I'm gonna use another one of my favorite tools, my hands. Up here on the top, we want the texture, so I'm gonna start working the hair in different directions with just my fingers, and again, I'm just using the tension of my hands to create the movement in the hair. I think the one challenge that I see very often when we're blow drying hair is that we're not thinking directionally. We're not thinking where do we want the hair to move to. We're just kind of going through the motions, just doing uh, 
you know, maybe a technique that you were taught in hair school or by a mentor of yours. But I want you to take those techniques and those things that you know about blow drying and I want you to look at the actual growth patterns and how you want the hair to fall. It's going to really increase the, the, uh, the diversity of your blow dries. You won't feel so stuck in one spot. And really that's what keeps us interested behind the chair is keeping things diverse. Now as far as the sides are concerned, if she had a lot of growth patterns around the ear or around the neckline, I would go and do the same thing with the fine teeth of the comb, and that's going to help to create that tension because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I still haven't found a brush small enough to round brush that length of hair. So that's where the fine teeth of the comb comes in really handy. So by just doing more of a hand dry, you can see I'm starting to coax out the natural texture of her hair. But by doing that pre-dry on the fringe, I'm getting more of a polish in the fringe. And I like the contrast of having texture here with some smooth fringe right there. So again, put down the brushes once in a while. Pick up that short cutting comb. Use that to press out the hair rather than your favorite brush. This is Andrew Carruthers coming to you for Sam Villa. Hope you like what we did today. <laughs>